I'd like to start by reading a part of a poem written by Charles Finn. Don't be fooled by me. Don't be fooled by the face I wear. For I wear a mask, a thousand masks, masks that I'm afraid to take off, and none of them is me. Pretending is an art that's second nature with me. But don't be fooled. For God's sake, don't be fooled. I give you the impression that I'm secure, that all is sunny and unruffled with me, within as well as without, that confidence is my name and coolness my game, that the water's calm and I'm in command and that I need no one. But don't believe me. My surface may seem smooth, but my surface is my mask, ever varying and ever concealing. Beneath lies no complacence, Beneath lies confusion and fear and aloneness. But I hide this. I don't want anybody to know it. I panic at the thought of my weakness exposed. That's why I frantically create a mask to hide behind, a nonchalant, sophisticated facade to help me pretend, to shield me from the glance that knows. So I play my game, my desperate pretending game, with the facade of assurance without and a trembling child within. So begins the glittering but empty parade of masks, and my life becomes a front. I idly chatter to you in the suave tones of surface talk. I tell you everything that's really nothing, and nothing of what's everything, of what's crying within me. So when I'm going through my routine, do not be fooled by what I'm saying. Please listen carefully and try to hear what I'm not saying, what I'd like to be able to say what for survival I need to say, but what I can't say. Hi, everybody. Hello. My name is Michael, and I'm a recovering drug addict. I don't know about anybody else in this room, but I'm very good at pretending. Pretending that I have the answers, pretending that I'm OK, pretending that I can give a TEDx talk. The reality is, I'm just really good at putting on masks. I originally wanted to come onto the stage and talk to you like I had my whole life figured out. I wanted to give the greatest TEDx talk anyone had ever seen. I wanted it to be funny, original, witty, and awe-inspiring. However, after talking to a friend, I realized all I really want is for you to like me at least the version of me that I planned on presenting to you. <sighs> but the truth is, my pretending is what has slowly killed me over the last 23 years of my life. So rather than try and give you the best TEDx talk in the world, I'm just going to be honest and tell you my story, a story that has led me to where I am today, a story of a little kid who has put on so many masks that he's forgotten what he really looks like. And hopefully my story helps both myself and others in the long and grudging process of taking off our masks. <sighs> like I said before, I am a drug addict in recovery. My story doesn't start with popping pills and drinking into oblivion. It was much more innocent than that. At 14 years old, I went to the park with some friends, smoked some weed for the first time, and I loved it. The food I ate was tastier, the jokes I heard were funnier, but probably most importantly, I could breathe a little bit easier. There was a sense of ease in that park that I hadn't felt in years. That was the spark of a very toxic hate-love relationship. Over the next few years, I had a high school career sprinkled with punishment, detainments, even a hospitalization at 15 years old for my alcohol abuse. But none of those consequences could take away that first feeling of freedom I got from getting high. What I didn't realize is I was slowly learning how to use drugs and alcohol to cover up the ugly parts of me that I didn't want to show myself or anybody else, the parts that made breathing a little bit harder. I would laugh off my consequences to friends and justify my toxic lifestyle to my parents with the fact that I played sports, I got good grades, I went to church on Sundays. These are just more masks. I quickly learned which one would look best around which group of people, and I slowly lost my sense of self in the process. 
After I graduated high school, I was on my way towards true freedom, college. I was hours away from my parents, surrounded by constant partying and everything that came with that. With newfound freedom came new drugs, ones that made breathing easier than ever. My main responsibility at the time was to manage the masks that I had to wear when I came home from school. A conversation over winter break would sound something like this. Yeah, Aunt Lynn, school's going really well. I made Dean's List, I'm working out a lot, I'm meeting lots of people, and on top of it all, they have a great alumni network. It was all bullshit. <sighs> Aside from my innocent portrayal at home, I had to juggle the image that I was trying to create for myself both at school and on social media. I had to make sure anybody and everybody knew how much fun my life was. If anybody had asked, I would have told them I was having the time of my life. University frat boy, pumping my fist in the air Thursday through Saturday, getting good grades Sunday through Wednesday, doing drugs on a daily basis, and telling myself I was fulfilled while doing it all. But if anyone took a second to really ask me, and I really took a second to think about it, I would have told you I was dying inside, that I was scared, insecure, and lost with no direction. GPA, fraternity life, a big smile. All of these were tools to put up the front that I had my life together. Even I believed the facade I created for myself. I, I convinced myself I was living the life of my dreams, but I wasn't living. What people didn't see were the broken relationships, the mental anguish, and the god-awful hangovers. This may come as no surprise to hear, but eventually my constant partying caught up to me. The consequences continued, and the things that were once so useful in covering up the shame, insecurity, and despair were no longer effective. I had reached my limit, so I did what any smart college kid would do. I called my mom. I remember telling her I needed to get out of school. See, I was convinced that college was the problem. It couldn't have been me, right? I couldn't hide from her the condition I was in, so I went to rehab to, to appease her concerns. I wish I could say that was the start of my recovery journey. My first day there, I met people who put needles in their arms, crashed their cars from DUIs, who hadn't seen their kids in years. See, now them, they had problems. Me. I was just a dumb kid. At least, that's what I told myself. Even with the growing list of evidence stacked against me, I still had many successes and many masks to prove that I didn't have a problem. That would soon change. I left rehab about just as quickly as I walked in. I remember telling myself, I just need to work out more, eat healthier, fix my sleep schedule. Notice how quitting drugs wasn't on that list. I mean, how could I give up the one thing that always seemed to help? The one thing that made breathing a little bit easier. <sighs> my drug usage evolved, and so did my pain and suffering. If I told you every little detail about the year that followed, we'd be here for a very long time. But I will say this. It was getting harder and harder to fool myself into thinking that things were okay. Quarantine struck, and the combination of self-isolation and continued drug abuse was killing me mentally, physically, and spiritually. I can no longer say that college was the problem. Broken tables, broken walls, a broken home. All of these were symptoms of the insanity of my addiction. No one else saw it, but I did. My parents did. I think there was a moment in all the chaos where my masks disappeared at once, and I was left with a version of myself that disgusted me. I saw the destruction that I had caused for both myself and the people around me, and it left me broken. What happened? Was I always like this? 
I had run out of things to cover up the pain and suffering, and I was brought to my knees in the process. This time I asked for help, and I meant it. May 18th, 2021. One year and nine months ago today, I walked into rehab for the second time. One year and nine months ago today, I gave myself a fighting chance. One year and nine months ago today, I stopped using drugs and alcohol to mask my pain and suffering. But I still wear a mask. If I'm being completely honest, I had a thousand thoughts in my head telling me not to do this talk. <laughs> I'm so far from being okay that it feels ironic to try to give you or anyone any insight for sifting through life. I'm scared. Full stop, I'm scared. I'm scared that my sobriety is just another mask, that in the process of uncovering one layer, I've put another five on. I'm not some confident dude who loves to smile all the time. I've gone through life so long putting on masks that I don't entirely know who I am. I can't tell you the first time I put on a mask. Maybe it was the first time I saw my parents fight. Maybe it was the first time I got bullied. I'm not sure. I also can't tell you what it looks like under all those masks because I'm still trying to figure that out for myself. I do know as I peel the layers, I will find more and more masks. Some might be beautiful, some might disgust me, but under all of them, I know there's just a little kid who wants to be loved, and hopefully I get a chance to meet him. If you haven't picked up already, I don't have the answers, but I do have my story, and if I were to have you take anything away from it, it would be this. Ask yourself, what is your mask? What do you hide from the world because of fear, guilt, or shame? Whether it's a broken heart, a broken home, or a broken soul, we all deserve healing. Now, keep in mind, it took me a tremendous amount of pain and suffering to get to a point of awareness. But I'd like to think that my struggles can be inspiration for some and a signal of hope for others. I challenge you, look in your mirror, this time without any masks. Look at every bump and bruise, every scar and insecurity. Don't let the fears of what you might find deter you from this path of freedom. Instead, revere in your honest reflection and propose to yourself a purposeful way of life, one that isn't all smoke and mirrors. We've all experienced great grief, regret, and depression somewhere along the way. What masks do you wear to cover your ailments? What masks do you wear in hopes to be appreciated, accepted, and loved? What masks do you wear to appear strong, reliable, and complete? The greatest strength I have found is honesty. No one is meant to live with shame. No one is meant to live with regret. No one is meant to pretend. Cleanse your spiritual makeup. Undress your corporate costume. A life expressed with authenticity is a life worth living. Don't be fooled by me. Don't be fooled by the face that I wear, for I wear a mask, a thousand masks. None of them which are me. Who am I, you may wonder? I'm someone you know very well, for I am every man you meet, and I am every woman you meet. Thank you. <laughs>